Well, judges and coaches uh, coming down the field of play. You'll see them march here halfway the world, but a third of the way down. And here come the superstars. Olympic champion Mete Gazos follows out Daniel Castro of Spain. This is promises to be something special. Bronze medal match here in Munich at the European Championships. have made it down it's nice that they get to walk down and the crowd get to see them yeah full glory with their, their equipment uh, we go down now for the athlete introductions on target number one representing turkey Mete Gazos. <laughs> on target number two representing spain so great lineup here the Olympic champion from Turkey Mete Gazos at 23 years old is currently the world number one and Daniel Castro from Spain is the world number 51 but he picked up his first major international senior medal last year on the a silver in, in the Hyundai Archery World Cup circuit. So he is his performance is climbing at the moment. And um, we've already mentioned Gazos not had a dip in form but ha perhaps has just taken his foot off the accelerator since winning the Olympic title. He's here to shoot for bronze though here at the European Championships but it will be Daniel Castro to get this match underway. A little bit of a surprise uh, right there for me, but also for him. There, <laughs> there was a surprised look on his face, and I didn't recognize that as a shot that should go to the left six either. So uh, let's see how he corrects this. A little too much, maybe. The set's probably gone. But it's, as you say, a really important arrow in the sense that now he at least knows, okay, if I shoot a good shot, it at least goes into the 10. Because um, shooting a 6 and then a 7 on the other side, you can it, it doesn't do well for your uh, your confidence typically. So it's nice uh, for him to get that last one in and uh, get the match properly started, uh, I think, for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's in some respects, he's, he's fortunate that he's in this uh, set system that the recurve point scoring is based individually on each set. So he's got that time to recover that last arrow, that as you quite rightly explained, the rule is critical. Yeah, so even though he lost the last set with six points difference, um, he's still only two set points behind. And if he uh, wins the next set with one point, they're all leveled up, even though uh, in total he'll have shot five points less. So uh, that's the, the beauty of the set system, but it's also a bit of a danger. So y you constantly have to be uh, shooting well, or you can uh, you can still be caught up and uh, um, yeah, lose the match. So. Uh, it's important that he uh, really gets it going from now on. Certainly is, and the, the, the 10 will give him the confidence. But perhaps uh, if he looks over the other side of the line, uh, just at a one drop point with the sighter for Gazos at the beginning, he looks in imperious form. He looks back to his best. Yeah, and, and I think he hasn't really been away from it, but uh, yeah, maybe just uh, kind of hovering around it. So the bronze medal match between Castro and Gazos resumes in the second set. Castro trailing, so he'll shoot first. Yeah, there was a 
bit of a wobble, but he still manages to get get it in the gold. Um, I do really like uh, watching the methodical shot process of the um, uh, actually most of the Spanish team, but uh, in particular of Castro. He, uh, he has a really satisfying shot, and I'm sure that Meta was not so satisfied with that shot. This is um, uncharacteristic for yeah. archery. <laughs> the, the, the arrows are all over the place. Yeah, well, y yes. <laughs> by their very high standards. Exactly, yeah, yeah by, by the standards that we've gotten used to them uh, from them. But yeah, there's a bit of shaking, but it's not enough to really you know, ring any bells in my book. But well, the 27 they scored is not uh, gettable by Gazos. So this is an important arrow for him. So both of them had important final arrows. Uh, and and it's losing the set at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's nice that he illustrates my point I just made. He uh, wins this set with one point, uh, and they're all level in this match again, even though um, effectively he shot five points less than Meta in the total of the match. So. Uh, that's the um, yeah the beauty of the set system. He's uh, he's all the way back into it right now, um, and uh, yeah they both ended with a ten. So uh, yeah, anything can happen for me. So go back to the point that my, my callous phrase all over the place. The arrows are all over the place. I did. I want to qualify it by saying that we are so used to just the the yellow part of the target being hit that when you see one going left and one going right and off into the blues it, do, it is it is a bit unusual yeah yeah it's definitely unusual and uh yeah the, the reason i was a bit hesitant about that is because it's easy, really easy for us sitting here to say ah they're all over the place but for uh your average archer these groups are still pretty very they're good awesome for the average so, archer <laughs> uh so that that's what what kind of nuance I wanted to make, but uh, yeah, you are correct that uh, this is not really the level that we've uh, we've grown to uh, uh, enjoy from them. Nerves, perhaps? Maybe nerves. Uh, although Meta doesn't seem like he's really nervous. Um, maybe he's just not really getting into his his usual groove or rhythm. Um, and well. you can sort of see their shirts uh, fluttering in the wind a little bit. So maybe there's more wind that than we expected there to be. Start of set number three and that one's drifted over to the right so I think you're right I think the wind may well be the factor here and isn't it surprising that we've been to venues as Gazos shoots his first arrow in this third set he's over to the right as well yeah, I, don't, I don't think this is a coincidence <laughs> no so uh, but we've been to ven venues much windier than this Antalya for example on the beach very windy yeah and they're still in the middle and the fact that there's so little wind here I think is actually a massive factor isn't it yeah and I think because they're basically blocked from the wind uh, themselves so th there is th these huge stands around them but they're not very high so they won't block all of the wind uh, it just it's very difficult to feel what's going on on the field but the arrow will uh, will be in an arc. So on the top of the arc, the arrow will catch some wind and will drift outside of the center. So uh, I think it's uh, it's just a deceiving wind. It's, it's not necessarily the, the most difficult wind they've ever m dealt with, but it's just deceiving. Well, they've shown, whilst we've been talking about it, that they can both hit the middle of the target after two eights. They both shot two tens. And that is what we are more used to. They've found the middle yeah. of the target now, and we have got a proper match on our hands. Three sets done, and we have not been able to separate them. No, there's nothing between them. And I think the the wind is, like I said, it's, it's uh, not a wind where you're blown around with your side picture, so you can still aim in the middle, and you can still um, decide where you want to aim on the target. But it's very difficult to recognize where the wind is coming from and how much effect it will have on the arrow. So. Um, yes, it's easy to aim off when there's not much wind on the bow, but where do you aim off if you don't have any information except for the, the wind socks that are also under that line of the stands? So they won't 
give you an accurate representation of how much wind there actually is. So in, a, in effect, your point of reference is that very first arrow. And it yeah. to go into the eight. That's that's what that's a, that's what it is. It, it seems like that because that's what we've been seeing in, in pretty much all of the matches so far. Um, if people miss, it's typically uh, either the first arrow because of the wind or the last arrow because of the nerves. So. Uh, the middle is typically very good. We get some good close-ups of the steely determination on the face of Daniel Castro. All square, set number four, and it will be the Spaniard to shoot first. See, there's that, that cider again. He's uh, he's hit a seven on the right. So Meta can take that information and aim off to the left, nice. which he probably did in this case, um, but maybe a bit too much. So it's uh, I think it's also a game of, of tactics here. Like how, how much will you aim off and um, how much do you dare to aim off when you're not feeling any wind? So it's a, it's a very mental game at the moment, I think. A little bit of lottery here with uh, such stillness. Nine. Yeah, it does look like it it pierced the line. So, and there's no asterisk. So I think it's a nine in any case. Oh, and he tried to steer that to the right. So this one he didn't intend to shoot so far to the left. But chance for Gazos here. Big chance, in fact. Nine or ten. And he has got the points with that nine for a 27. Uh, we have clear distance between them again. Gazos took the first set, went 2 0 up, only for Castro to fight back in the second. They shared the points in the third. Now Gazos has reclaimed the lead. So, if we summarize what you were saying, Chef, the fact that Castro's shooting first is actually, certainly on the first arrow at least, acting in favor of, me uh, of Metagallos. Yeah, in, in windy situations, it's not always best to shoot first because you um, yeah, you have to uh, be the guinea pig, essentially. Uh, you shoot your first arrow and then your opponent can take information out of where your first arrow hits. On the other hand, your opponent will not know where you have aimed that arrow. So if you do hit in the middle, your opponent might think, oh, there's no wind because he hit the middle, and then not aim off and uh, yeah, hit a different spot on the target. So uh, it's kind of it goes two ways again. We can see the coach deliberating with Gazos, but <laughs> look at how that's there. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, Mete and Goktuk have uh, grown into more than just athlete and coach. I think they are good friends and um, it helps to relax and calm down in a situation like this to just uh, hang out with your friend. Well, Daniel Castro needs all the support he can get here. He's shooting at the start of the fifth set to stay in this bronze medal match. Eight. And a high eight. Well, I wonder if Gazos is licking his lips at the prospect here. It's a way longer shot than we're used to from uh, Meta. You've managed to stick it in the gold. Yeah, and all he needs to do is actually match Castro. Just needs the one point to take the European yeah. bronze. That's a lovely shot from the Spaniard, though. Yeah, it, it hit lovely. <laughs> and I think he was not really happy with the execution, but uh, that'll easily be forgotten to uh, go into the next arrow. <laughs> yes. I think Daniel needs a 10 here um, to stay in the match because then Meta will have to shoot a 10 as well. If he shoots anything less than a 10, Meta just has to match that to win this match. Yeah, nine. Nervy as well at the end, wasn't it? A nine for a 27. So a nine for the point he needs to take this bronze medal. A nine to win. Oh, that is a beautiful finish. The grouping is fantastic. 
Uh, looking at the last six arrows, he all shot six left nine, so his group was very, very good.